in this video a very short I hope insight in um, the issue how a test circuit can fail. I made a capacitance tester in the past it's here there's a video on my YouTube channel and it works very good by the way in fact it acts in a quite simple way um, there is an oscillator schematic and there's one capacitor responsible for the oscillation frequency and that's here between these electrodes want to show it here perhaps it's still interesting though this whole setup failed I heard uh, from someone very well educated in electronics that when you add a DC voltage to a ceramic capacitor it changes its capacitance in a certain way that's logic but on the other hand I was very interested um, to test that uh, property and I made this circuit an external external voltage supply here and here the capacitor under test and here a resistor uh, via which I could add to that capacitor ceramic or whatever a certain voltage DC voltage here and then look on the counter and on the scope uh, uh, whether I could see frequency differences due to the DC voltage added to the, the capacitor but uh, I had totally forgotten that I have used this circuit for the capacitive the, the capacitance tester and that means that when we add here a voltage to the capacitor under test in fact it is connected here to these electrodes when we add a voltage here we also add a voltage here via this source this voltage source we also add via that external voltage source a voltage to the first transistor and perhaps even to the second transistor in this oscillator circuit and that makes that the measurements are completely uh, in a certain way completely nonsense because when you change the operation point of a transistor and that's done here by adding that positive voltage, that extra positive voltage to the base when you change the operating point the frequency surely will change so not uh, by the, uh, the DC voltage added to that capacitor but by the DC voltage added to the transistor circuit to the operation point of that transistor circuit that makes the frequency change of course you can use this in a certain way uh, as a voltage dependent oscillator uh, where the oscillation frequency depends on the value of this capacitor and on the DC voltage added here and so let's take the best out of it don't weep about this uh, failed experiment but on the other hand uh, it's usable and I want to show that it's usable I change now the, the voltage here to that to that 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor and in fact I'm changing the voltage now to the transistor circuit here inside 
and let's see what happens. So changing that working point makes that the frequency changes very very substantially. That could be interesting. When you uh, apply a DC voltage to a capacitor and see that the frequency changes very very substantially. So after all perhaps it's interesting to show the properties of this kind of failed experiment. And they are here. Um, I found that uh, these capacitors here uh, were tested at first on this meter. It's the uh, Tao Bao meter from China. And in that meter they gave uh, more or less good uh, values. They showed, uh, for instance, for this ceramic capacitor of 10 nanofarad, uh, it showed uh, a value of 9.9 nanofarad. And on my own meter, but uh, I've told that these measurements due to the electronic circuit uh, are influenced by the transistor circuit anyway. Uh, the Chinese meter showed that that capacitor had um, a value of 9.9 .9 nanofarad. My meter also told that here. Uh, of course I had to uh, find out the exact capacitance by, mean, by means of a kind of uh, interpolation and that in a very very coarse way. But anyway, uh, so after all I'm going to do a new experiment with a, a good measurement setup, reliable so not related to the operation point of a transistor circuit, but only on the pure, pure capacitance. So a capacitor in an oscillator circuit to which a uh, varying DC voltage is added. In a certain way it's logical when we add charge to one plate of a capacitor that the frequency changes seems quite normal to me, but I'm very interested in uh, how that works in real and whether uh, we can find out and see effects. A uh, type of capacitor, ceramic, 10 nanofarad, ceramic, 100 nanofarad, foil capacitor, 10 nanofarad, foil capacitor 100 nanofarad. Uh, such a setup, of course, is very vulnerable to capacitive uh, elements here. For instance, the wiring here is quite loose, loosely, it has an effect on the frequency. That has everything to do with making a proper test setup. When you want to make a proper test setup, uh, don't use this wiring, this type of wiring, because of its stray capacitance, or um, calculate the stray capacitance and the effect on your measuring circuit. That's also possible. And that's in general my approach Though I don't do so many calculations on stray capacitance, uh, I always take a, quite a margin. Um, so that I have measurements that are conclusive, 
but sometimes not very precise. Of course, I've also uh, made other circuits on my YouTube channel where the measurements are very precise. But anyway, uh, here again the results of this failed measurement circuit. But it could be interesting to show the effects of different DC voltages added to that oscillator circuit and added at the same time via a 27k resistor to the capacitor under test. And I found out that this is a good value for a resistor to be connected in this case to a DC source of 0 up to 25 volts. 27 gay worked good. So a failed circuit and anyway could be an interesting circuit. And that's why I publish it.